Loser! Diego! That? The end of the world, November 25th, 1963. And where am I now? Dallas, 10 days earlier. I need to find my family. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another film optics review brought to you by the Drive In Podcast Network. I am your host, Christian, and today we're going to be talking about the long awaited umbrella academy season two that is now streaming on netflix and as always i'm joined by my good friend and my co-host Devin. how are you doing today man how was your weekend it was a solid weekend i'll say that yeah it was solid it was a pretty solid weekend I, it's I was nice I, to have something to binge like you, if you have nothing to do just throw it on enjoy it yeah like honestly i i thought that it was going to take me longer to finish Umbrella Academy because I thought I was going to finish after you because I think you said you started on Friday. I'm like, yeah, I had had a nice hot start on Friday. got the first four in. Yeah. So, and then I kind of just, I watched the first two on Friday after work and then I watched the rest of it uh, early yesterday. You know, I'm an early riser. So, you know, very productive in the morning. I get that stuff pumped out there. So (laughs) I was, I was done by like two o'clock. I'm like, wow. Like, I still have like the rest of the day to like do something. So I was I was quite proud of myself, but I was interested in yeah, it. Yeah, quite so. proud watching just sitting around watching Netflix. It's very, <laughs> it's yeah. an honor. It, it it is an honor to sit there and binge on a, on a Saturday. You know, not not having a job on the weekends it really does uh, do wonders for you. <laughs> but uh, before we begin today's review, you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Red Circle, TuneIn. Pandora, and of course, iHeartRadio, and it will be uploaded to YouTube later on. Um, the, we, the Red Circle is like, they have this thing where it, your podcast, would, uh, you can automatically upload it to YouTube through uh, the Red Circle, like through the website, but now I think they have it to where um, they'll process, like they'll download a video for you, but you have to upload it yourself. So I'm assuming there's some kind of, you know, YouTube's like, hey, you know, you can't do that type of thing, like straight from your website onto ours. So, but yeah, it'll be up on YouTube uh, shortly after. Uh, it takes a bit for the video to process, but that's okay. But it's just an audio form anyway. <laughs> but uh, as I said before, we're going to be reviewing Umbrella Academy season two, and I'm going to read the synopsis here. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a non spoiler section first, as always. And then we'll go into a spoiler section because we understand, you know, this just came out on Friday. Not everyone's had a chance to watch all 10 episodes. So we want to be fair to those who have not watched it as of yet. But the synopsis that I found, the one that I found that I feel fits the best because there was another one that was only like an at like a sentence. But the synopsis reads five one of the characters warned his uh his family so so many times that using his powers to escape from vanya's 2019 apocalypse was risky well he was right the time jump scatters the siblings in time across dallas texas over a three-year period from 1961 1962 and 1963 and the initial release date, of course, was this past uh, Friday on July 31st. I can't believe that it's actually August, Devin. Can you believe it's it? It's August. It's August, wow. dude. And in about... It's this hell years. Yeah. In about Three five days. Three-fourths over. Almost. Yeah. It's, see, the entire year, it, just, it doesn't feel like August. Like, we're, it's almost Thanksgiving, man. <laughs> It's almost Thanksgiving. How do you feel about that? It's, we got to get to September first. That is true. We got to get and Halloween. Is Halloween? Yeah. What's gonna happen with Halloween? Are we gonna have Halloween? It's gonna be so weird. Do you go trick or treating for Halloween, or do you go to any Halloween parties? Trick or treating. What? <laughs> hey man, I don't know what ev- everyone's business is. That's why. That's why I asked. Am, am I my five trapped in a child's body? You might so what's be. What's happening here? I, I guess so. I don't know. 
But anyway, I, I'm curious what's going to happen this year. Who yeah, knows what's going to happen with Halloween? Yeah, I'm I'm actually pretty curious myself. I really just don't know what how that's going to handle out. We kind of already heard from, you know, Target that, you know, this year when it comes to um Black Friday shopping, you know, big crowds, it's, it's not their thing. They're not going to be open Thanksgiving. It sucks that it took a pandemic for this to happen. But I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles. So um, let's just dive right on in uh, to the non-spoiler section. So we've been waiting for this for a while, Devin. A long, long time. Season one came out, oh my gosh, about, what was that, last year? It feels like it was two years ago. Um, it was 2019. That was 2019. Okay, so it feels longer probably since we've been in quarantine. Yeah, I actually don't remember what uh, grades we gave the first season, but... Did we I review Umbrella it. Academy? I think so. One? Maybe, we? actually. I don't know. I think we reviewed uh, The Boys I, I know. I, I know I watched it, and I was like, hey, you should watch this. Yeah, I watched it as well. I don't think we ever did a review of it. Oh, man. Well, that's got to change. All right. This is going to be... No. <laughs> We're going to do our season one review first, you know, chronological order, that type of thing. No, it's all right. But yeah, I because I remember we did... I, I can confidently say that season two is much better. I agree like, 100%. Large yes. improvement. Large, large improvement. I did like season, season one. Season one had potential. You it could did. tell the potential was there. And it paid off in season two. <laughs> I'm glad we got a season two because I think the the three shows that I guess you could comp- or the other two shows you can compare this to would be especially Doom Patrol because I started watching that as well. Um, it's more of a grounded superhero story. You know, yes, there are powers and whatnot, but it's not, you know, like a Superman movie or an Avengers movie or Spider-Man or, or what have you. And then I guess you can kind of maybe the boys i feel like that's a little bit more higher um not as much as a grounded story but i guess you can kind of sort of compare it to that those would be like the other two tv yeah, kind of edgier yeah. like not for kids right <laughs> but i don't think umbrella well i i would say out of the three probably umbrella academy would be the one that's more suited for a younger you're, audience? You're really pushing it. I'm pushing like, it. Yeah. But if I, I were know. to choose. I don't have kids. I don't know. I don't have kids either, so I don't know. <laughs> so if you have kids out there, let us know in the comments or tweet us on Twitter at Film Optics with an X. So, yes. Um, it is TV 14, so I guess oh, if is you're it 14, really? you're good to go. Yeah, because I would say even with like Stranger Things, right? I mean, it's not necessarily for kids, but it is for the a... The Boys is definitely TVMA. There's no denying that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, def- definite major improvements over the first season. Like, you know, like we just said, we both enjoyed the first season and, you know, we saw the potential. And with season two, they definitely paid off. And it's just... It's it's even more of a grander scale, and I I was I was hooked. Like I just couldn't stop watching yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't. I enjoyed the entire thing. It didn't wasn't a single lull. Yeah, like, like a there dull wasn't moment. a point where I was like, oh, I'm bored. <laughs> it was yeah. Like I would say, even even with the side stories, because you know when since the siblings are scattered across Dallas, Texas, within three different years you know they're all doing their own thing they've all of essentially have started a new life and you know you have (laughs) you have uh (laughs) klaus um in his cult which i thought was my god hilarious and then klaus is just amazing yeah, he he really is one of the the biggest stars on the show. I would I would say that out of all the siblings, probably number one isn't my favorite. I don't know them by numbers except for five because that's his name. Well, yeah, there's well, so seven is Vanya, uh, six is Ben, and then five is five. I actually do we know five's actual name? No. Okay, that's what I thought. And then it, I bet you it's probably the same name as their father. That's probably why they call him five, but <laughs> um, four is Klaus. 
And then three is Allison. Two is Diego. And then Yeah, one. Luther sucks ass. I'm just going to say it now. Luther. Yeah. He doesn't do anything. So, so oh, yeah, that's right. L- Luther is one. Is that, That's his name. Yeah. Okay, yeah, th- that's what I thought. Yeah. He's not my favorite. But, um, and I, I would say out of all the siblings and their, you know, journeys, his is probably, probably like the least interesting of where he ended up. Like, of course, he would end up as a fighter. But, um, yeah, working for a mob boss. Right. But, you know, he's, I mean, he, he adds to the group. He's just not, like, even in season one, he's just, Especially in season I mean, one, he was a does big he dick. add to the group? Eh. Well, he kind of sets really off Vanya's powers year. in season one. Like I didn't, I didn't like him at all from season one. Like I was like, you are being such, oh my gosh, like terrible. Like, but yeah, he's yeah. Def, the other ones are more appealing. Like it kind of, he's kind of just there. Like I mean, we all know his superpower, it's super strength. He's half monkey, half man. So. Well, He's barely it? even shown it. Yeah. Out of all of them, I would say his power, they don't really show too much. Uh, he kind He's kind of just that big lug, you know. And I think that's watch. purposeful to kind of su- keep subverting expectations. That is true. a big, strong guy to do everything, but he does the least. And I, I like that about the show because it's not, you know, it, it's not a show where even with like young justice or justice or especially with young justice or even like, even like justice league unlimited, you know, with Superman or um, Superman junior and uh, young justice. I'm totally forgetting blank on his name right now, but it's like, you don't want to have to rely on the strong guy to get you out of every single situation. And that's what I really like about it. But uh, was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we get into the spoilers? Uh, the music, the music was yes. so good, dude. Every that's... time a song comes on, you're like, "That's the perfect song choice." It was the best soundtrack to a TV show that I've probably ever heard. It's like it, it, it was like Guardians of the feel, Galaxy level yeah, for me. It, it enhanced the show like a lot. <laughs> yes, it did from the get go. I wonder if one... um, I wonder if what's his name has anything to, to do with that. Who, the uh, show creator? Um, my, chem- my Chemical Romance guy. Oh. I wonder if he chooses the songs. I wonder. It's possible. It is possible. I, I don't know. I feel bad for forgetting his name. What is it? Let's um, see. <sighs> yeah, Gerard okay. Way. That's who it is. Gerard Way? Gerard Way? Yeah. He, he wrote the comic series. Oh, yeah. Because it's like a Dark Horse comic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's honestly like it's in. You can actually find the like entire soundtrack. It's it. They just pulled. I feel like they just pulled a bunch of covers from different people's songs. Like I mean, Billie Eilish was in there. Uh, we had some Adele, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the Swedish, Swedish, the Adele. Swedish Adele. That was fantastic, and a few others. I think, I think we had some Freddie Mercury in there. I can't remember at one point or another, but like I watched them all like back to back. I watched like eight episodes you know, back to back to back. So, but yes, the soundtrack is fantastic. If you haven't watched it, it definitely sets the mood and it's just, it just feels right. Like I said, guardians of the galaxy level soundtrack. And, and in my opinion, absolutely. Like I, I, um, definitely close. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, covers versus real song. It's a little bit different there, but yeah, but, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, Dive right into spoilers. I feel like we've been, you know, tiptoeing around wow, the bush. There's so much to talk about. Yeah. We, we feel, it's time to get into the weeds here a bit. So if you haven't watched Umbrella Academy Season 2, uh, stop right now. Go ahead and watch it and come back and listen to the spoiler section. So, boom, we're here. We're, we're talking about spoilers. One of the biggest improvements from the new season is the, the villains were infinitely better. Yes. I, I, in the first season, I liked Hazel. I thought Mary J. Blige was really bad. No offense, Mary, but I forgot she was just not person. really an actor, so I didn't yeah. really like her. But yeah, it was pretty much just those two. The handler was still there, but yeah, there was only really those two guys in the first season. And this season, it just stepped up a lot. Immensely. Especially with Le- Lila. She was amazing. Lila was yeah, so she was the um 
the oh my gosh, um, the the British Indian, yeah, 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 yeah. That's She's I was, I was blanking human on ditto. Yeah, basically human ditto because we've we've been led to believe the entire you know through season one that there were seven children born on the same day, but it looks like you know with their their father was tracking down these humans. With well, these they always mention that there are more born on the same day, but he only tracked down tracked seven down of seven. them and was That's able to right. buy seven of them. <laughs> buy seven. <laughs> This is such a crazy notion, but yeah. But yeah, her she was just like a spark of energy into the season. She really was. Like she 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 brought like at first I wasn't sure how to feel about her, to be completely honest. Like when I first met her and then she was there the whole way. It's kind of crazy. She like I think she was, she was almost in like time. every episode. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She was in the crazy bin with with uh, Diego, Diego all the way until the end. <laughs> Diego and his hero complex was insane. Absolutely loved him. And and at first, like for for season one, he wasn't like he was one of my favorites, but I think five. And Vanya, Vanya's always been my favorite. You know, this Ellen Page. I absolutely love Ellen Page. I think she's still my favorite of the group. And then Allison's my second favorite, and then five, and then it and it's fine, ben, Klaus, for me. Klaus, Klaus. And see, it's so hard to, man, if, if, if I were to rank them, I would need some time. Because Klaus, in this season, I love how, like, he just forms a cult. And he's like, oh, man, like, I told everyone the world's going to, you know, end in 2019. And, you know, obviously through the plot, we find out that the apocalypse followed them into the time period that they're in, which pretty much leads up to the assassination of JFK. And we find out that, again, yes, Vanya is the bomb. Vanya is always the bomb. And it makes sense because, you know, since her powers have been suppressed throughout her entire life, essentially, you know, she never had the same type of training that the other siblings did. And then we actually end up finding that Ben ends up saving oh, the yes. day. See, that's another huge improvement because Ben, he was pretty insignificant the first season. But mm. this season, he was very, very cool. Yeah. I and loved every part he was in. Yeah, he, he definitely is one of my favorites, especially with you know him falling in love with that one cult girl and possessing Klaus's body. Yeah. <laughs> body. But I, would, I, I guess I would ask, want to ask you really quick, um, between everyone's journey, who's... You know, before they, you know, end up running into each other, whose journey did you like the most? You know, between, you know, you have Allison with, you know, the, the movement that was going on and, um, you know, with racial sh- segregation and, um, you know, Vanya's story. But who, who's, whose uh, story would you say is probably the your favorite that started a new life? I really liked Vanya and Allison's. They were both pretty similar. They both had those those Captain America vibes, mm-hmm. falling in love with someone from a a Different past generation, time. and then having to move on to the future. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but it's what they had to do. Yeah, I, I think definitely those two um, side stories um, definitely spoke volumes, especially in it. Just so happens that you know in today's world. It's very fitting. And, you know, it's a lot of people will say, well, you know, I don't like politics in my shows or like my video games. And it's like, you know, it's not just politics as in like government and whatnot. It's politics as in like what is happening in today's world. And it's if it echoes, you know, our our current, um, you know, our current situation that we're in, both of those stories do so i thought they did a fantastic job with those but um i wish we would have found out a little bit more about klaus's uh cult because we kind of got like a a little montage you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and like you know of course klaus would be the one to start a cult out of all of them but (laughs) i mean he he is very charismatic you think you'd fall for his uh his cult you think you would join no oh uh, knowing him obviously as a outside viewer absolutely not <laughs> but i love it how you know he was talking about the 
he was trying to tell his call. He's like, yeah, like none of this is real. I've been, I'm a fraud. He's like, I've literally led you all. Yeah, they're all like, we're we're frauds too. Yeah, and I, he has like you know the tattoo "Hello and Goodbye" on his on his palms, which is really cool. Um, but you know, uh, he definitely gives all those hippie vibes. But I really liked his side story when he goes to track down his lover from Vietnam. That and does not go well. It does not. But it's like that was very powerful to me as well because you know he's obviously he was sober for three years and then he falls off the wagon. And of course, knowing Klaus, he would be the person to go seek out you know his lovers. Like, hey, like you don't know this, but you're gay <laughs> type of thing, and yeah. I love you. And yeah, that's a lot to kind of just drop on a person. And he gets and, punched in the face. Yeah, straight. I didn't think he was going to do it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, that packed quite a wall up there. Absolutely. But um, I guess, sorry, I've been talking for a while. But was there anything you wanted to touch on that, you know, we can dive into? I also think another, um, I'd say a top five improvement over the first season was um, Diego's hair. <laughs> <laughs> got got much better this season. See, I liked his hair in the first one. I I, I had to grow. It, it was I, pretty forgettable. Yeah, I mean it's it's a basic cut, but yeah, I think now seeing the, the mane suits them so much more. It does, and that it it grew on me. Like at first, I wasn't too crazy about it. And then I was like, you know what? It's just it is what it is, and I kind of just ended up liking it. To be completely honest, um, but. We're, see, you know, since we've ta- been talking about, you know, so much that we have, you know, you're geeking out about, but were there any moments, like any least favorite moments? I'm trying to think myself to see if there was just like a moment where it's like, oh, I don't really think that fit well within the story. Or did you think everything that, you know, panned out was just, you know, good for the season as a whole? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, uh, I, I guess mean, we already complained about Luther. I felt like yeah. he didn't really contribute anything to the story. Yeah, especially like when with his, you know, other life when he has been living there for about a year, like the mob guy that he was with, you know, it kind of just ends. But maybe we'll see more of that in season three because the ending was like. Holy crap, you know, they they stop the apocalypse or you know, they stop Vanya from blowing up thanks to the the real VIP, which is Ben. And you know, they go back to their own time, their own time period, or so they thought, and their father is alive. And we have to talk about their father as well being like an alien. Yeah. That was what weird. The fuck Did is that? Not see that coming whatsoever. And they're in the, and you know, they see Ben's like mural, like painting above the fireplace. And then their father's like, oh, we assume that he's, he's like, I was expecting you guys to show up. And they're like, how are you alive? You know, we're back in our own time period. And it looks like it's a different version of 2019 with the Sparrow Academy. Which Sparrow. I'm not familiar with. Are you, I'm not sure. Did you watch like any? videos afterwards that's normally what i, I do. plan on it <laughs> yeah I, I did too for sure like that's i that that's what i did for curse so, so like, it's seemingly an alternate universe where ben is alive and the best of the bunch and we don't know who the other shadow characters are yet that was but awesome by the way ben, the ben's got away. a new cut and he's looking uh looking very fierce. my chemical romancy <laughs> yeah very follow like, up who boys. the hell are you assholes yeah <laughs> it's like why why is Ben's like Meryl just there? And it's like, holy crap. But yeah, I love it how they just had like, it was like five or six, like, you know, just silhouette of people behind him up, up, up on the banister. And it's just like, holy crap. And I'm like, there it is. That, that was, that was perfect. They're, they're in another pickle. You know, it's, it's, it's all about time when it comes to, but, but their alien dad was expecting it the whole time. Yes. Which is very strange. Um, <laughs> Oga for Oga, by the way. <laughs> I did not know that meant an eye for an eye in Swedish. So yeah, as I was just going to bring that up, originally I thought those three were going to be a weakness, but as it went on, it just kept getting better because they just <laughs> it just kept getting funnier every time, everything that happened to them. They barely had, like, any lines, if any. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Swedish hello by Adele was just 
hilarious yes, and it perfect. really was but i felt sad that you know like their their first brother passed away and they're just they're a wreck i didn't feel sad at all <laughs> well i mean it was it, it was just it was just funny to me yeah he was just like he just screams into the into the world and then <laughs> and then allison has the one brother kill the other brother i was like holy shit that was insane that's, that's dark as soon as like they she opens up the door like complete like throat punch like allison it's like okay they already obviously they already know but um i really liked you know with allison's new husband and even with (laughs) her his her husband finding out about their entire family it's like of course you know he runs in the clouds he's like oh like oh my god like you're my brother-in-law it's like oh and then luther comes along and then everyone else and it, it really is a culture shock because, you know, we see it with, we kind of see it with Vanya and her relationship with the family on the farm. But it really is nice to see an outsider, you know, looking into, like, this crazy family. Because, obviously, us, the viewers, we know what's going on. And, obviously, you know, the commission knows who they are. But we never really got a character who's finding out about you know, the entire family for the first time as we did in season one. Cause I mean, season one was really, was good. Um, it did take a bit of, you know, trying to figure out who was who and whatnot, but obviously, you know, watching season two, it's very easy to, um, tell the difference between them. But, uh, do we want to talk more about the villains or any nice little Easter egg references you wanted to <laughs> shout out there? Because I, I know, um, I know that there, there was definitely a few time references that people were, <laughs> that a uh, few of the gang were uh, referencing. I think one was like, was it Instinct or Backstreet Boys? When uh, yeah, I was gonna bring that up. Just like there were just so many like little parts that they threw in there to just add some some comic relief, and yeah, they all worked out so well. Like that part, Backstreet Boys, he just. He just recites the lyric. <laughs> Any last words of cult. wisdom, prophet? <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Oh my God, we're back again. <laughs> and I just, I loved um, towards it was the, the uh, finale towards the end. Yeah. Where, where the the uh, handler comes in and they stop her this time and Cla- and Klaus like puts up a, a fake karate stance. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but that I made saw me crack that. Up. I saw that. <laughs> I'm like, Klaus, what are you going to do? He's just like, oh, get ready. But <laughs> so funny. It, it was hysterical. But it also, was... one, one, of the, one of the more powerful, like, small moments was when um, they first get back together in the house. Mm. And then everyone, like, obviously argues and fights and runs away. But Ben, <laughs> it, ben is still sitting there. And he goes, I really missed you guys. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Ben. Yeah, that that was that was a proper moment. And speaking of Ben, I didn't know that Ben was stuck in purgatory because well, he was choosing to stay in purgatory. Yeah, he was choosing to stay in purgatory, but I but didn't he, know he told um, he told Klaus that he was stuck because of Klaus, which was a lie. Which was a lie. He was just afraid to go towards the light, which was very powerful. And I, and Klaus I honestly, called, him, called him a shit heel for it. Yeah, <laughs> those exact words. But it was it was very powerful because it was you know a, a, I didn't know that Klaus obviously you know we can he can speak to the dead but yeah as I said I didn't know he was choosing to stay in purgatory I thought he could just summon you know or conjure whoever he wants to talk to at certain points in time so it's like to Klaus yeah now Ben is finally at rest and he's actually moved that has passed on officially so that was uh yeah that, that was a very um nice moment yeah, and he, also he was one of the biggest surprises just because he was so not um used in the first season yeah and i really wanted to know more about him and especially when he um <laughs> when ben uh possesses klaus and he's like hanging out with uh, the uh, the one girl from the cult, and then he runs into Diego, and then you know he proves that you know oh you know I'm Ben I I took over Klaus's body and you, you just you, you could really tell how he's been dead for 16 years, so it's like I definitely feel like he is one of the most important 
characters out of the bunch, even though he is gone. So I, I really, yeah, and then I really like he, how he hugs Vanya for the yeah. one last time. <laughs> I need to feel a hug. Yeah, that was. Oh, I, I, I can. I, I'm Al- thinking, almost got some tears. Almost. It, yeah, I, I, I can. I can probably say that Ben throughout this conversation, it's definitely moved up to like my number one favorite, like out of all of them. And he's like not even there, and he still shows has that much of an impact on you know the siblings even though they're not related they 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 pretty much act like they are except luther and allison (laughs) but now uh, now um the the eighth member and diego yeah eighth member and diego and then well and there was also um harlan (laughs) not the harlan (laughs) we know what a name (laughs) right can't uh can't can't seem to shake that name can we no (laughs) Yeah, who knows what's happening with him? He just kind of drives off and still has powers at the end. Yeah, he, um, you know, he's kind of Gene graying it in the back of his mom's car, and it's like cool. So, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming I can see him being used as a villain in the future when he grows up. He's like, he's nice. Why to didn't everyone. you tell me? Yeah, he's like mean to everyone but Vanya. <laughs> Or yeah. maybe he actually turns Vanya into a villain. That would be very interesting to see. Or maybe he's mad at Vanya for leaving him. Yeah. And then also, um, really quick, I wanted to mention um, Five's older self. And then th- that whole time. That, that was confusing. <laughs> that was that was actually very confusing for a second. I was like, okay. Like, we, we've had a lot of movies. They that, also didn't look that much like him, I didn't think. No. It definitely acted, <laughs> definitely acted like yeah, him. They did act similar. But, <laughs> but yeah, that, that whole thing was a bit confusing because I'm like, you know, I thought the commission was meant to keep the time, you know, from any time interferences, which means Kennedy does have to die, which does happen. But of course, them being a part of, you know, a age or time period that they're not meant to be in probably did change some things, especially with allison's you know the movement with segregation that whole thing that was crazy by the way like she essentially saves her husband's life and she's like he's like what did you say to the cop what did you say to the cop and she's i'm like um excuse me uh he she literally just saved your life dude how about some a little bit of gratitude like you're allowed to be concerned but let's not forget that she did save your life but yeah yeah <laughs> sorry i'm like going off on a little craziness today. but um so i guess you know we've pretty much gone through all majority one, of our one other thing i wanted to bring up as a potential weakness i don't know mm-hmm. how you feel about the handler coming back but i thought that was kind of lame like she gets shot in the head in the first season and then they're just like oh, i she think has she's metal, dead metal for plates. this time she has metal plates in her head so she lived she's like yeah. okay really yeah she was um I mean, she's obviously important to the story, and, and her being there was entertaining, but she just kind of felt cheap. <clears throat> right, yeah, and I I feel like I would have felt that way if she actually survived this time, but towards the very end, you know, when she mows everyone down, which, which I was not expecting whatsoever, but I really like how, you know, Five essentially uses his powers to, instead of... You know, when he was talking to his father, saying, you know, he uses his alien father's wisdom. Yeah. Instead of jumping back, you know, days, hours, he's like, try baby steps, you know, seconds, minutes. And that kind of saves the group. I didn't at first I thought it was going to be like super cheesy. Of course, you know, they all like come back. But I like how they incorporated it. It it all ties together. And I was like, okay, that it it is kind of worrisome. It feels like people are invincible in this show because. Yeah, deaths. Most deaths don't seem permanent, besides the bad guys. True, and but even then, I will say it is a comic book type thing, and it's like no one's ever really gone, even with any comic book that you ever read. I mean, even with like Avengers Endgame, yes, we lost, um, God, sorry, Iron Man and Scarlet. I almost said Hawkeye. I'm like, wait, no, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, they just, they just, I think they had to be careful to not um, make the stakes seem lower. They have to right. make sure so, there's actually stakes. People feel things. Yeah, going into season three, 
Um, I'm, you know, I, I love the, you know, they've, it's, it's, it's just like this new season was there's just, just so much, there's so much intrigue. They, yeah. That's, that's a perfect cliffhanger because they resolved the current story while moving forward to the next story. Right. That's how, that's how you do a cliffhanger. That, that is, yeah, exactly. And it's like, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, they, they stay on this path. You know, season two was, you know, as we said, leagues better than season one, even though, you know, there is no season two without season one. And they they really do a good job of, even during the very, the very beginning, they do a little recap before you even start uh, the season off. And yeah, like Netflix obviously, is good at that. Yeah, they were really good. It was a quick, like, one, two-minute intro. And then that awesome, like, opening scene was fantastic. Just yeah, I was going to say, I, I kind of wish there was a little bit more of that. Yeah, they, I wish we would have us. They teased us in the beginning. Yep. They showed us the badass fights, but then we didn't really <laughs> get another one of them, like, combining their powers. Even at the end, they didn't really do anything. They didn't yeah, use that their is powers true. Much. It, it was more of a Especially grounded. Klaus, because I, I wanted to see <laughs> Klaus use his powers more. Cause his are yeah, so cool. I really wanted, because I want to see what can, you know, since he was a part of the Umbrella Academy, I want to see what he was really able to do like we got a glimpse obviously you know in the beginning he was conjuring ben and you know ben was fighting alongside them so hopefully yeah, that, that that first scene got got you so hyped i just it really wish they did went back to um to more action scenes like that mm. you see i didn't even um like when the first like few minutes came out like on twitter i didn't even watch it i didn't want to because I wanted to be, you know, completely blind going in. I knew nothing about the story. And, you know, obviously, you know, I would see, like, the first, like, few, like, five, six seconds. But I was like, that was literally it. Like, I didn't know. I didn't watch it at all. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, oh, yeah, it's really cool. I didn't want to be like, yeah, yeah, I saw this. I wanted it all to be new, fresh in, in my head, for sure. But, um, yeah, so we pretty much talked about what we wanted to see from season three, uh, which was a really interesting talking point there but uh you ready to get into scores or was there anything else you wanted to um touch on before we get into our scoring of season two where's pogo that's what i want to know little baby pogo so cute i know i don't know no clue i don't know i don't know if he's alive in their current alternate universe that is true yeah well i guess we'll just have to wait and see i don't know yeah, there's so many questions. <laughs> yeah, which which is which is a good thing. It's never never a bad thing for a Netflix series. Um, hopefully, I I could see them maybe going like four seasons and being done with it. Like, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know how much there is to tell. I mean, there it's might so be hard more. to tell with Netflix nowadays. Yeah, but yeah, they they. I mean, they 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 cut it short sometimes. I totally understand. You know, that, like, I feel like a lot of Netflix shows only gain so much hype anyway. But, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. But I, I can I can kind of understand why they're cutting off three, four seasons. Like, you don't want a show to run too long. Like, this isn't HBO or AMC we're talking about. But, you know, that, that that's more where the goods are. But, again, you know, Netflix just continues to... I mean, they, they, they got a lot of shovelware, a lot of crap on their... Um, on their streaming service, but they have a lot of good stuff too. So there's all there's always something to watch on Netflix. Always something to watch there. But let's yeah, get into king. our hmm? Netflix is king. Netflix, yeah, Netflix is king. They don't take off, you know, their own properties, whatever. HBO Max, but we'll talk about that another time. So uh, let's get into our final scores here for Umbrella Academy season two. Uh, Devin, what would you give this season of the show out of a hundred? A solid, crisp ninety. There were yeah. a few small issues we outlined throughout this review, but other than that, I enjoyed it. Episode one through ten. All right. Yeah, I would pretty much agree with you there i'm just gonna go smidge higher and just give it a 91 just just as a a nice job well done you know we have talked about our 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 concerns our issues about the show but um I'll be, i'm just giving them an extra point because it was leagues better than the first um the first season you know we weren't exactly sure where it was going to go but it did get season one did build up and it had those 
pivotal moments where, you know, especially with Vanya's amnesia and, you know, the group was essentially fighting to begin with. And then, you know, everything that happened with Allison in season one with their throat getting cut, that was, you know, but yeah, job, job well done. A great job well done. Amazing, fantastic job. Hopefully season three, you know, carries what season two had to offer and more. And we'll just have to wait and see. So that pretty much concludes our um, series review or season review of Umbrella Academy season two. Again, streaming on Netflix. Go ahead and check that out, folks. It is it, it is a great time. And of course, we are part of the Drive In Podcast Network. Go ahead um, on to Music City Drive In and look up and check out the other podcasts that we have. I've said before, you know, we have commentaries, um, pod, uh, musical po- uh, music podcasts, and we have podcasts about. Uh, Oscars and of course ours is on there as well and we got sports if you like sports football baseball basketball it's all there it's all there for you guys to uh, check out they, they got some really great content going on over there so um, do we know what we're, what we're reviewing next week or <laughs> I don't know um, Project Power doesn't come out for a while I know that there's we'll definitely that check at that some out. point we do have a few things in the, um, you know, in the queue that we're going to be reviewing. Excuse me, but a um, little that, bit within that. that um, the Seth Rogen movie comes out this month. Oh, does it really? Oh, the pick. Yeah. Oh, that's right. On HBO Max, we got to figure out when that comes out. So um, yeah, we'll let you guys know what our next review is. Um, can't really say it's a bit of a dry spell, but it's just we don't really know what to, what's coming up to watch. So um, I do know the binge is coming out um, sometime in August. I think it's the 28th, but we'll probably uh, record and review that. Like I said, we, we, we have a few things oh, in the queue. Oh, an American Pickle is this Friday. There it's this go. coming up Friday. There we go. All right. Well, there we go. American Pickle. That will be our next uh, review. And cool. All right. Sweet. Got that figured out right on the podcast. <laughs> so, again, uh, that was Devin, and my name is Christian. And, of course, one more time, you can uh, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram, Film Optics, Optics with an X. Uh, I've been trying to pump out as much content as I can. You know, there's only the two of us, so we can only do so much. Um, I'm the one with the Adobe stuff, so it's like I got to well, – when, when we're pumping out news, I try to, like, kind of pick and choose what's – just interesting to us or what's, you know, interesting to our uh, Instagram uh, people out there. So, yeah, we will uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace.